Ciudad de México. Mexico City guys I'm so excited the city is huge there's so much to eat so much to explore let's get going I love how tropical the streets are here it's so luscious everywhere guys there's a hummingbird <laughs> trip is probably not enough for you to see the entire thing. Not only does this museum cover Mexico's history, but it goes all the way back to the prehistoric times, which is a lot of years to cover. And they have a ton of artifacts that are just incredibly fascinating. So if you want to see everything that this museum has to offer, maybe set about two days or allocate a lot of time for one day. So we focused most of our time at the Teotihuacan exhibition because we were going to see the pyramids the next day. And oh my gosh, they have this recreated mass burial site like for human sacrifice. I know some people can get a little icky when they talk about this stuff, but I genuinely have such a morbid curiosity for these things. This was right up my alley. This is what we're seeing tomorrow. It's so cool. Mm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And it pairs so well with this mocha. I saw 
a butterfly. Mariposa. We're at our second museum of the day. It's the Museum of Contemporary Art and it definitely feels contemporary. Let me show you. I think that's a man and a woman or it could be a woman and another woman. in Spanish. Castillo. Oh, we're going to Castillo. Oh, no. That's a tall castle. That is where we walked up from. Oh my god. I'm dreading going back down. and it's not dinner time yet so we're gonna get some tacos again this is my favorite part of eating tacos all these yummy salsa I got some consomme and Swan got his massive taco there's one two three four five six tortillas that's six tacos worth of food right there yum Heading off to dinner. It's been a pretty long day for us. We took a little break at the hotel, but look, we dressed up so nicely. Soft shell crab, taco. More tacos. Okay, this is Tuan's ultimate favorite food in Mexico. Octopus. Oh wow. I died after drinking half a glass of margarita, but I'm revived. We are now going to a bar. showed you at the anthropology museum well this is the real thing like this is my first time seeing a pyramid in real life and there are so many wild dogs like everywhere and they're all really friendly and cute by the way so in my mind when i think of pyramids i just think of pyramids but teotihuacan had an entire avenue preserved called the avenue of the dead and it was so cool seeing homes and ceremony sites like all the way back from when the name Teotihuacan literally translates to City of the Gods because they believe that this place was where gods were created. Cool stuff. What you're seeing here is the Pyramid of the Sun. It's the main ceremonial site and if you take the Avenue of the Dead and follow it down the road, then you'll reach the Pyramid of the Moon, which is another ceremonial site.
fuck? It's gonna start moving. Exactly. Don't heal is gonna make us grow. Grab a little bit of some of those eggs. guys azul i just took the fattest nap ever i slept through the entire car ride back to our hotel and i still slept three more hours and it's four o'clock right now the sun's setting and tuan's hungry so we're gonna go eat It's like milk with a hint of chocolate. I killed it. Where are we going next, Juan? Casa de Toño. What's that? Pozole. They're known for their pozole. Oh, we're getting pozole for dinner. Okay. I love that stuff. It's not really dinner. It's, just it's not dinner? Food to hold us over throughout the night. Okay. We're Apparently, getting, it's not real dinner. We're getting like it's a snack. Food at many places. Throughout the, throughout the so today's a food adventure day, a food marathon. It's always a food adventure. Okay, you're right. With Juan. <laughs> yes. worried about traveling alone in Mexico City, don't worry because there are police cars literally on every street. I feel pretty safe here walking by myself. We're trying to grab a seat at Headshake. Speakeasy. It's supposed to be one of the best bars in Mexico City, but we did not make a reservation, so we'll test our luck. Okay, we found the Speakeasy. It's actually really hard to find. It's right next to a hotel. You kind of have to know where you're going to find this. So they did say you need reservations, but for a party of two, they're willing to accommodate. This is number three this is number on the three. list. The car is not even open yet, and there's a huge line forming. We're second in line. We thought having a small bar was going to be a good thing, which it was. But then everything started to come down, and we weren't rich when we were coming down. Actually, going through, uh, but our face is all the door. Oh, great. Wow. How delicious does this sound? Gin's my favorite alcohol. There's matcha, vanilla, Greek yogurt, and white chocolate. White chocolate shaving on top. That looks so delicious. 
The drinks are insane. This straight up tastes like so green tea. And Tuan's drink tastes, tastes like that salad. It's like a frizzy salad. There's so much flavor in the drink. Oh. It's like matcha citrus ice cream. So delicious. This is round two. I got Senta, which has green tea and yuzu. And Tuan got the coffee fizz. It has white coffee beans inside. I've never heard of that before. Oh my god. Mm. <laughs> the coffee but it's like really refreshing wow i need to get this next mm. i'm not kidding when i say that was a life-changing experience tuan how did you feel about the bar 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 i don't even like alcohol but that place made alcohol tasty drinking at night here is so dangerous because there's food everywhere like it's a full circle. We came back to Tabasco Road. I'm gonna go with another gin drink. This is a London bitter, and it's like a strawberry gin drink. Sounds delicious. Okay, it was. That's good. It I wasn't mean, bad. I like the second drink. Yeah, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't like the best either. It wasn't life changing like the first one. The first one was definitely more gastronomic. Yeah, no, the first one was just so creative, innovative, and everything tasted so good. This one was a little bit more of a hit or miss. I am beyond stuffed, but could I eat some tacos? Yes, I can eat some tacos. Finally getting tacos! Late night tacos. There's already a line forming. Apparently this is supposed to be the most classic Mexican late night taco place. Wow. Locals and tourists all alike. Flood is here. We're going to order the three proteins. You get al pastor, beef, and then we made it inside. It's giving me in and out vibes, but taco version. So I'm really excited. I already know this is gonna be my favorite salsa. The guacamole, yeah, the guacamole salsa is my favorite. I know that's our food. That is totally our food. Come here, please. Come, come. We're over here. No, she's lost. I think she's lost. No. She made it. It's really good. Yeah, it's good. These are the famous Orinoco potatoes. They're supposed to be super crispy on the outside, and they're like mashed potatoes on the inside. Pastor, beef, and chicharron. Monstrous tacos. Note to self next time buy Frida Kahlo tickets in advance because you cannot purchase them at the museum. You have to purchase them online. And they're like sold out three weeks in advance, so make sure to get your reservations way, way, way in advance. We're eating our sadness away at the Berea Cards.
Breakfast in Mexico City. This is our leftovers. This is the octopus from Contramar, and then the bread we got as a gift yesterday from Quintanel. And this is honey coffee. It's a cold brew coffee we picked up from a coffee shop, and Tuan got four special shots. 